Okay, hello and welcome to this next edition of uh, group theory. And today we are discussing, we are still discussing representations of finite groups. And uh, we would be, so you've seen that, you know, for the same group S3, we have several different sort of representations. And uh, so, and then we've seen a little bit more where I told you about, you know, uh, this uh, trivial representation. And, uh, you know, I also told, told you about some one dimensional representation. What we're going to do today is discuss uh, reducible representations, okay? So, Right. So uh, reducible representations is what we want to do. So, okay, so this is the previous thing anyway. So as we said uh, that, you know, as uh, we were just discussing, you know, there are several representations from a, of, of uh, um, S3. And actually it should be, should be clear already that the number of representations of group is unlimited, even for some finite group like S3. So as I write here, how do we find some order in this jungle? Uh, can we find some order in this jungle? The answer is yes. Let's try and understand how. So first for this, we are going to discuss something called equivalence, uh, I mean equivalent representations, where we have two representations, d alpha and d beta of a group. Suppose there exists a non-singular three n n cross n matrix S uh, such that S such that d alpha is S inverse d beta S. Then these two, two, two representations, d alpha, d beta are going to be called equivalent representations. And for our purposes, these equivalent representations are going to be one of the same, okay? So these are going to be the same representations of G. So that's, that's, uh, that's interesting to hear. Uh, now, what, what exactly this n, n cross n matrix uh, does is that it represents a simple basis uh, tr transformation of this n, n dimensional vector space Vn. So let's see this, okay? So if you have two vectors V and, uh, and Vn omega, uh, which represent two vectors of Vn, such that the, the, the transformation induced by, by, by the representation of the group element follows this, okay? So you have dB. Uh, uh, d, d beta acting on v, uh, giving you, uh, giving you, uh, giving you w. In that case, uh, so this is one. And say so suppose there's a different choice of mm, basis which can be represented by a matrix S, uh, such that you know S takes e i uh, these these to e uh, e, e j prime. So these are EIs and EJs, EIs and EJs are, are uh, EIs and EI primes are two uh, different choice of, uh, I mean, basis vectors in VN. So in this new basis, the components of V and I mean, W are not the same. So V, v transforms, you know, if the um, basis vectors go, from e, EI to EI prime, what is gonna happen is that V and, and V and W will, will each go to, so V is going to go to S inverse. V and W is going, going to go to S, uh, I mean S inverse, uh, I mean S inverse W, okay? So what is happening here? So what is gonna happen is that, uh, so, it should, it should be obvious that uh, you, so let's look at, let's look at, let's look at W, right? So W under this transformation goes to S inverse W. So this whole of the left-hand side should also go to S inverse, I mean, of itself. So this is, this is going to be S inverse into this, this, this whole guy. So let me stick an S inverse S out here. 
so so you know what what is happening is that so this this particular object is called uh, the alpha as we have seen and this was the transformation of the v alpha v's and this was the transformation of i mean of the w's so you you can see that dg d d alpha g that that we have here is just the same that is the representation of the group element in this new basis vm so that's all that is happening so you know s s uh, takes your um, basis into a, into another basis which which this manifests itself uh, also in the transformation of the v's and and in, uh, w's the two vectors that that we have shown you and uh, so what happens at the end of the day is if you go go through with this you see that the alpha is the one that trans i mean it implements the transformation of of this uh, you know changed v to this change changed uh, changed up so v alpha is a representation of the group element in terms of this new new basis of v um, so uh, let's see uh, let's now look at this uh, you know s3 again and then then now look at this word representation okay so uh, let's take s and let's take s s to be an object like this okay this is a 3 cross 3 uh, 3 cross 3 3 matrix and uh, you can easily look at what s inverse is going to be s inverse is something like this okay very good now what we will do is that we will we, for each group element g of s3 we are going to determine the representation uh, such that you know this uh, uh, ws of of g is going to be s inverse dw of s so dw is something that you guys have already worked out hopefully uh, and if you do this you uh, put this s inverse s uh, in here then it's an exercise to show uh, what you are going to get okay so for 2 3 you are you're going to get this this 3 cross 3 matrix for 1 2 you're going to get this for 1 3 you're going to get this and you know for the rest you you're going to get these guys so what is happening? Uh, so all of these matrices, look at this. You know, this has a block diagonal structure like this. All of these guys are, uh, you know, uh, two cross two blocks, like 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 I have said here. This is sort of like the, I mean, general structure for all all of these uh, these these things which I have right, so these and what you see is we have just discussed that that you, there are these two dimensional uh, two dimensional representations you know, so the matrices that 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 we have down here are all. Uh, these six of these guys are just the same as the two-dimensional uh, representation that that we that we showed you. I mean earlier, which was in terms of this triangle, right? So, what is the case? So, the as a uh, I mean sort of uh, consequence of this above property, this three-dimensional word representation of 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 S three, which we call D W. Can now be subdivided into sort of two sub representations of S3. One is just just the I mean simple one essentially that 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 we saw, and then there's this two cross two thing. Okay. Now let's show this a little more more explicitly. Okay. To show this a little more explicitly, what we will do is we'll take this following orthonormal basis for this three dimensional vector space B3. So we have a a as as this guy, uh, e1 as this, and e2 as this. So uh, what is going to happen is that uh, so we we will see uh, you uh, you can use what what is upstairs to show that uh, you know d, dw of a is a, and uh, this is also equal to d1 of g. Okay. So so this this is something that you can explicitly show. 
so what what is what is uh, what is happening is that uh, I mean, uh, so at this uh, I mean one one dimensional subspace of V three, which is sub uh, I mean spanned by this vector A, the word representation is equivalent to the trivial representation. Okay, so when 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 you're doing this, when you're looking looking at uh, A then the word representation is equivalent to the trivial representation, okay? Now, uh, so for, for this, you can just use this particular, I mean, uh, this uh, uh, thing that we have up here, this uh, table that I've shown you here to, to just, uh, you know, just cross check this. Now we have now this two dimensional subspace, which is spanned by the vectors E1 and E2, okay? Uh, so one, one can define vectors here uh, by V1, E1 plus V2, E2. So this gives you V1, V2, all right? Okay. So moving on. So uh, if you do this for all of the, I mean, all of the elements of S3, uh, all, all G of S3, then what you'll find is DW acting on V is again equivalent to D2 acting on V1, V2, okay? So for example, let's, let's see an example. Uh, let's look at D1, 2, 3, okay? D1, 2, 3 is what? D1, 2, 3 is this object here, okay? This is uh, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. This is something that you can go back and check. And what is V? V is, uh, v is, v is this, this object that, that we wrote down earlier. So, uh, you know, just make, make sure that you have the normalizations, right? Yeah, so this is, a, uh, this is the thing, thing that I've just uh, written down here uh, with, with the square roots and stuff. V2 is obviously this guy. So if you write them down now in terms of E1 and E2, uh, what you will see is that, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can do this. And this is again, a simple exercise to see that you would be able to rewrite this in terms of a two cross two matrix which is just just the D, D2, okay? All right, just to resume what we were saying. So the point essentially is that, uh, you know, in this case, for all of these, uh, you know, these, these objects, what we can see is that, uh, you know, D of any uh, D, DW, the word representation in this two cross two subspace actually gives you this two dimensional representation as well. So is equivalent to the two dimensional representation. So what happens is that, you know, this is a sort of general property. Uh, so there is an, if there is an N dimensional representation D alpha of a group on a sort of, on a, <laughs> Uh, complex vector space. This is said to be reducible if there exists a basis transformation uh, S in this VN such that all the group elements of G break up into something like this. So if it is a, you know, D alpha breaks into D, A, D, B, and D, Z, okay? So, and D, A, D, B, and uh, up to D, Z, a representations uh, of a, a dimension smaller than n, where n is 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 the uh, a dimension of of uh, d alpha. It is such that the I mean dimensions of a, b, and and up to g add up to n. Okay, so the vector space essentially can be subdivided into smaller vector spaces. Uh, so the vector space V alpha can, uh, Vn can be divided into smaller vector spaces V alpha, each of which, uh, in each of which D alpha of G is represented by, by a matrix, which is, which has a, uh, which has, which has a dimension, which is less than it. Okay. So this is, this is how, 
So this is how you know you you can have a, a representation which is which is a, a reducible representation. Okay. All right. So those that was uh, that was reducible representations, and obviously you know uh, the representations that cannot be reduced are called irreducible. So. For example, you know this two-dimensional representation of S two that S three that we were looking at is is an example of an irreducible representation. The trivial representation is also an example of uh, irreducible representations. Okay, we'll be un uh, interested in unitary representations, and um, there's a theorem by Maschke which says that every representation of a finite group is equivalent to a unitary representation. Now representation DG is called, D is called unitary when all the group elements G are represented by unitary matrices D of G. And remember that a matrix is called unitary when A dagger A is equal to A dagger is equal to identity. Uh, we will not, we'll not uh, instead of trying to prove this uh, theorem, we'll just, uh, I mean, construct a unitary representation for an arbitrary representation G, a D of a group G uh, of some order P, okay? So, uh, so let's, let's start off with T, uh, which is the sum over uh, of K equal to one to P, uh, D dagger, uh, D dagger GK, D GK. Okay, so the dagger of this is equal to, uh, I mean, you know, so you do this. And so the, I mean, uh, dagger is going to reverse this guy and, you know, what you will end up with is with T again, okay. And it's also simple to see that if you do D dagger T D, then you will also end up with T. So what you have to do, so do, do this and Put, put these guys in. So there's a sum over K. Uh, so this is, uh, this is here. So now, uh, you know, so DK DG is, uh, you know, is, is, is going to be uh, uh, D of GK with GI. And uh, similarly, so the you know, daggers will also work in this way. So it's D dagger GK uh, GI and D GK GI. Now GKGI has to be, be some equal to some GJ and there's a sum over I going to one to P. So now what you get is D dagger G, uh, GJ, D, GJ. So this again, it has, has to be equal to T. Now let's define a basis transformation S and this basis transformation is such that S dagger is equal to S and S square is equal to T inverse, okay? Now, what are we going to do? Uh, Okay, so this S, what does it do? It represents a transformation of basis. Uh, uh, it represents a uh, transformation. And uh, this is going to be from a basis. Uh, so this, this is going to be, uh, you know, a, I mean, transformation uh, to, a, uh, uh, so, so, uh, of something like, like this, which is, uh, I mean, given by the DGs uh, to a basis, which is, I mean, orthonormal to the, I mean, scalar product, uh, you know, uh, X, Y, okay? So, uh, I mean, from from this to this, essentially. So that's that's what S is doing. And uh, now, uh, what, what what did we say? We, we said that, uh, you know, D, D dagger S, uh, uh, square inverse uh, D, DGI is e equal to S square inverse. So what, what do we do? We multiply from the right side of, the, of this by D inverse S. And uh, so that's, so, and, and we are, we, we go to multiply uh, from the left by S. So let's do this. So what, what do we get then? So what we get is uh, down down to this. So uh, S inverse, so, so D inverse uh, S from the right hand side and S from the left hand side. 
So, you know, uh, here essentially, so it's S squared, S minus two. So you multiply it from the right with D inverse GI of S and from the left by S. So that takes it to S inverse D inverse GI of S. And on the right hand side, uh, yeah, I mean, again, you do. So that's, that's the thing. So this is, so this is what you have here. And uh, and on the other hand, you multiply again d inverse, sorry, uh, d inverse of d inverse s on the right hand side, and s from the left hand side. So this is. Uh, D inverse, so D dagger S minus two D. This is S from the left hand side. So this gives you what? This gives you uh, S D dagger S minus two S. So this essentially boils down to S D dagger S inverse. So what have we got by doing all of this song and dance? is that we have ended up with something which is uh, which is this right so what we find is you know if you take the take the sort of dagger of this guy then uh, so what 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 we have is s inverse d s dagger is s inverse d s inverse so that means that S inverse D S uh, is a, I mean, is a, a unitary matrix, and this is uh, the matrix representation. Is I mean, D S inverse D S is a, a unitary one. Uh, this is equivalent to D, right? So if this is equivalent to D. D is is also a D is also a, 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 a unitary representation. So what have we done? We have started out with a generic D a representation D of some uh, some uh, uh, some group G, and you have we have shown you that uh, you can actually uh, I mean construct from that some, some, some particular equivalent uh, representation, which is going to be explicitly, explicitly unitary. And that means that D is also unitary. So this, this in a sense uh, is, uh, is you know, a physicist way of trying to prove that, that you know, all you require are, uh, are unitary representations of finite dimensional matrices. And that is what we will stick to, okay. I mean, finite, finite dimensional groups. So we are going to stick to unitary representations of finite groups, okay. When we go to uh, infinite groups, uh, there, there can be more interesting things and there, there can be non-unitary representations as well, uh, but let's not go into that right now. So for this, uh, you know, uh, for this, this lecture, that's where I wanted to end uh, in that. And uh, we will next be going to try to classify irreducible representations. And that is going to be another lecture before we move on to some more interesting things. So yes, okay, so, so that's it for the moment. And we will, we will uh, get back um, shortly again, all right.